You've written about the uh, the idea of of cyber sovereignty, and and um, right. it's you, I I uh, I believe you're in the the middle of researching why you believe that it's not a good idea for the United States to pursue this. Uh, do you want to do you want to explain what cyber sovereignty is, and then why you you don't believe it's a good idea as a, as a goal to pursue? Okay, well, let's see where am I? I actually drafted a paper, but I haven't really circulated it. The problem in cyber is if you don't circulate it so, sooner or later, it's either obsolete or you have to do a lot of rewriting. But that's not my that's my problem, not yours. Okay, what is cyber sovereignty? <laughs> cyber sovereignty is the belief that countries have the right to govern the information that comes into their country. Okay, now in practice, countries can exercise cyber sovereignty, and they don't need anybody's permission to do so. Okay. And generally speaking, um, that's through the United States, that's through the UK, that's going to be true of China and Russia and all that sort of stuff. The problem is that cyber sovereignty is often extended to the argument that governments have a right to censor the information that comes from other countries. That adds part of sovereignty. And that sort of argument is incompatible with the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, okay? And it's incompatible with, I mean, the First Amendment is not simply uh, a legal statute, so to speak, but it, in fact, it forms part of the American political culture. It is the notion that good information will ultimately drive out bad information, that the government is in no, is neither uh, technically, does not have a monopoly on the truth. Right, and if it tries to exercise it, it'll have a monopoly on things it wants to hear, which is a very different notion. Okay, China and Russia have no such problems with this. In fact, China has, as everybody knows, erected a great firewall to keep information out. Um, Russia hasn't quite done that, but they have a lot of other techniques they use to suppress information, right? One of our complaints mm -hmm. about China and Russia is that the authoritarian model of governance which is antithetical to Western democratic values, is supported by the kind of censorship that cyber sovereignty says is a good thing. Right? So in the end of the, the, the day, the West can basically govern its own cyberspace, almost through technical means, um, but with a relatively light hand, without dragging in the ideology of cyber sovereignty. Um, and for us to make an argument about that is to add credibility to the arguments made by countries such as Russia and China, with whom we do not agree uh, ideologically. So it's sort of a no-gainer. It, it's a no-gainer. We don't get anything, and, and we lose a certain amount. Okay. Now, in the end of the day, can the United States force China to open itself up to information that China doesn't want it to? And the answer is, not really. Okay, I mean, there are a couple of technical methods you can use. They're considered hostile. Um, and generally speaking, we don't use them. Okay, now, having said as much, you may remember such institutions as Radio Liberty, Radio Free Europe, Radio Marti. So, yeah, we do that and other countries jam us and or used to jam us. I think Cuba still jams us. Not certain about that, but I think so. Um, so there is that. Um, but by and large, it is not in our interest to make a big deal about cyber sovereignty. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the podcast. Don't forget our sponsor, ExpressVPN, and my book, Brexit, The Establishment Civil War, can both be found in the links in the description below. And also, please like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. It's the best way to help us grow. Until next time, thanks for listening. Screw the hedge funds. You can make as many rules as you want, but if there's no teeth behind them, what's the point? Well, like Citadel is potentially just gone in a few months. It feels like financial institutions, that they are all laughing at us by buying GME. <laughs> Screw the hedge funds. Like I will lose my entire investment if it brings them down. Why on earth 
last May, could you buy the entire company for $200 million? What's been happening on Reddit and in social media and in the marketplace has never been seen before. I argue that nothing is off the table. There is nothing off the table when dealing with the volumes of money in something as big as the United States uh, stock market. The hedge funds have clearly underestimated a group of a group of people raised on Friday night World of Warcraft rates. Dark pools, they are they're another uh, mechanism to manipulate and cheat. Mainstream journalists don't say these things for a number of reasons. Uh, one is their sources are the people that I'm talking about, and so they can't call somebody a crook. Super Stonk and the other communities that have emerged are a hive mind, the likes of which we have never seen before. It's madness and brilliance, insanity and genius all rolled into one. It's very possible that Citadel will be gone in a few months. And, and not just Citadel, but the entire financial system has the potential to come crashing down. These crooks continue to gamble recklessly with the world economy, and this could be the moment that they finally get their justice.